Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Rapidfire um, different uh, video receive mode. You have the Rapidfire 1, Rapidfire 2, and also the legacy mode. As I understand it, the Rapidfire 1 is the full fusion of uh, videos that is received by the Rapidfire. So there's a uh, full uh, processing of videos received. In Rapidfire 2, there's the uh, less processing done by the uh, software on Rapidfire. So, so let's say, let's put it this way. You can say the Rapidfire 2 is like a partial processing and fusion of the videos that's being received by Rapidfire. For the legacy mode, it's really just the standard uh, diversity receiver without any video processing. But because Rapidfire has a higher sensitive um, receiver, so it will produce a better quality picture. But from my testing, uh, I'm not sure whether that's correct or not. I think it will also really depends on the video transmitter. So if you can see from um, the initial part of this video, you can see, I believe I used a single receiver uh, for this uh, first part of this video. You can see there's, there's a lot of breakup of the Tiny Hawk um, transmitter video because Tiny Hawk transmitter is not that great. It creates a lot of breakup when it's received by your goggles. So I think the signal is pretty weak. But anyway, then you can then you move on to the next part of this video, which is the second video that I put up. So that's where I use the legacy mode of the Rapidfire. You can see that it's also very very similar to the first part of this video, where the videos keep breaking up, and it's quite a harsh breakup, uh, which caused me to crash. And um, when I fly a, a quad that constantly has breakout in videos, um, I usually encounter this problem of not being able to see where, I, where I'm going, and I crash very easily. And um, so in terms of uh, the legacy mode, it's really similar to the normal diversity uh, receiver. So you can see a lot, all of, a lot of breakup. So it's highly dependent on the video transmitter from your uh, camera. If it has a very strong, sensitive and good transmitter, then you have a very strong with very minimal breakup in your normal diversity receiver. So, but this is not really as acceptable, even if you fly uh, generally like me, which I don't fly um, uh, a lot in a racing condition, but I do fly in a lot of built-up area like buildings and also trees, underground car park. So, so after flying with uh, Rapidfire, I find that it's very unacceptable to fly with a normal single receiver or diversity receiver because there's a lot of uh, video breakup, especially um, in built-up areas and with trees around, and and especially with um, quad that has a um, very weak uh, trans video transmitter. So if you can get a uh, rapidfire, this will eliminate a lot of uh, problems with a uh, very weak uh, transmitter from your video camera. And also, um, just flying generally, it's not acceptable to be constantly on the lookout for uh, video breakup because then your mind gets uh, very, very um, what you call that? Your mind gets uh, disturbed or get interrupted and your concentration gets affected by uh, constantly thinking about video breakup while you're flying around. So because of that, you will encounter a lot of problems um, when you fly through obstacles and that will uh, cause your crashes. 
So from now onwards, I don't think I will fly a um, normal diversity receiver anymore or single receiver receiver anymore. So um, I don't know in what conditions people will still use the um, legacy mode. Um, but um, as far as I'm concerned, Rapidfire number one is the best mode to use. Um, in terms of uh, like Rapidfire mode number two, there's little or less processing and you still do get a bit of breakup but it's not as bad as uh, the legacy mode. Um, but it's halfway in between the Rapidfire number one and legacy mode. Uh, it's still flyable but why would you go for Rapidfire number two? where you can get your fully processed video with rapid fire number one. I saw a video about um, the YouTuber talking about rapid fire number two because I think it's because it's less processing, the picture quality is more natural rather than more processed. So I would rather the picture quality be more processed and, and with minimal interruptions than having more natural color uh, videos. The reason being that with the process video, you see more uh, clearer and better quality and that will help you in your uh, flight or when you're flying around. So um, it really depends on the circumstances but any person using the rapid fire should use rapid fire number one. Uh, don't even consider using Rapidfire number two or the legacy mode. So it's not really the way to go for flying FPV. Flying FPV is really about being able to see clearly and with, with something, uh, a receiver and transmitter, transmitter that can give, give you the best quality pictures. So have a look at these uh, sample videos that I have uh, put up here. In this video review so make your own mind about that but for me personally I will never fly a standard diversity receiver anymore and Rapidfire is the benchmark for any other video receiver and if they can as I, as I mentioned in my previous video to make the processing even better with better pictures quality and better colors this will take the FPV um, flying to the next step, which we don't really need to go for a uh, high definition video. I said if you want to use, uh, you know, if you want to fly like uh, using the DJI type of quad where you do a lot of filming, that you want to see uh, better picture quality going to HD level or you fly a fixed wing. So other than that, if you fly quadcopter, I think it's more than sufficient if you can get Rapidfire. And also, um, like for me, I have Attitude B4 because I don't want to do the power mode. And if you can get the HDO, that'll be best. So hope you guys uh, get something out of this. Hope you guys like and enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe to my uh, channel for more videos. Just remember, quadcopter is not rocket science. See you next time.